The last time we saw our next guest, he was walking into the locker room after a loss that left many MMA fans questioning his skills and toughness, as well as the legitimacy of the fight itself. No longer the baddest man on the planet. Kimbo Slice is back, though, now, and he's ready to appear on the 10th season of The Ultimate Fighter in order to prove once and for all that he should be feared as a legitimate mixed martial arts heavyweight. And here to talk about his attempt to join the UFC is Kevin Ferguson, but you know him, of course, as Kimbo Slice. You're not mad at me for reading that, are you? Not at all. I, I want to stay on your good side. I, re I really do. All good. But I have to ask, what happened? I, Seth Petrazuli knocked you out in 14 seconds. Right. And, and a lot of questions around that fight. So, so what happened? Yeah, I mean, 14 seconds, wow. I mean... I mean, I changed my, my kids' pampers faster than that. <laughs> you know, I mean... Was it... There, there were some, as I mentioned, that, that questioned the legitimacy. I mean, I wasn't there mentally. Mentally, um, I was no longer in the fight. You know, um, after we were told that uh, Ken suffered a cut, laceration above his eyebrow, and he was no longer going to fight, kind of kind of mentally and physically, I just, you know... Uh, Ken Shamrock yeah. is one thing. Uh, Seth Petrozzoli is another... Did he, did he really hit you that cleanly? Um, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, didn't, I didn't feel a hit. I, didn't, I just wasn't there mentally. To be honest with you, I didn't know I was hit. You know, it, it, it was quick. How much does it haunt you now? It, it doesn't at all. For, for some strange reason, it's not really a, a, a haunting feeling there. It's, it's no, there's no fear. There's no... You know, it's, it's almost as if it was like a dream. How anxious are you now to get back in the ring and put I that mean, behind I, I mean, I was eager to, to fight from then, you know, just to kind of, like, prove to myself and to everyone that I could beat this dude, you know what I'm saying? I could right. smash this dude, you know, with one hand probably tied behind my back, you know, but that night I, I just was not there mentally. Mm -hmm. So it took a toll on me. So to, to, to come from that mentally and, and, and to get back at everything, fighting and training the whole nine, it, it feels good. You know that UFC President Dana White has been critical of you in, in the past. Yes. What made you take him up on his offer inviting you to compete on the show? It was the opportunity to, you know, to prove him wrong, you know, to kind of like prove him wrong and prove the critics wrong, you know, uh, you know, by saying that maybe I don't belong in the sport or something like that. But, you know, my heart is there. My, you know, my heart is there. You know, the ability is there. You know, I put my mind there. And, and once all that is lined up, you know, I can, you know, I'm a fierce fighter. How will your background as that street brawler, how will that help you in this competition? Um, a lot because, you know, I, I can, and I fight in, you know, anywhere, any location, you know, on the drop of a dime. You know, it, it, it helps in the sense that, you know, fighting in the streets, there was no, there's no crowd. There's no big setting. There's no, you know, there, there's not all the lights and everything. Well, when you, in, in the show, it was kind of, it's kind of like that in the sense that there's just not, there's no audience. Yeah. There's no, you know, coming out, no music coming out. A lot of the hardcore MMA guys say that that, that you are one-dimensional. That in an alley you're gonna you're gonna take it to anybody. But when you're in the in the the ring and it's suddenly different and there's other disciplines, that they're not sure that you can be taken seriously. Co convince the hardcore MMA fan that you should be taken seriously in this. And saying that I was one dimension, and that was just based on my stand-up. Yeah. You know, now I've learned you know learned a little wrestling. You know, a little grappling, a little jiu-jitsu here and there right. to make me, like I said, an all-around ultimate fighter. Right. You know, and the but see, the, the training, it doesn't stop. You know, it, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. We've had a lot of the uh, ultimate fighters on, and, and we've had boxers on. You physically scare me more than anyone that I've ever had sit there. Who scares you? Uh, I'm not afraid of, you know, I'm, I'm only afraid of God. That's the only being that I fear, you know. Another human being, you know, is beatable. You know what I mean? He bleeds blood just like I bleed blood. You know, and, and, I, and I, I just feel like in my, in my heart, whoever I fight, I have a chance of knocking them out. And I already know in my mind I'm going to get hit, so I'm prepared for that. So, you know, I'm, I don't have a fear to fight anybody. How would you do against Lesnar? Um, if it was just stand-up, I'd probably knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> but, in the, but, but, but because it's ultimate fighting, right. you, know, he's a, you know, we're talking about an extra you know, 80 pounds, another person in there. Right. You know, and and he's, he's skillful, man. He's, he has great skills. I'm not taking nothing from Lesnar. You know, I, I don't think his chin has been tested. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, but he's, he's a great fighter. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to love to keep watching him fight. Yeah. YouTube sensation Kimbo Slice is setting out to prove that that last 14-second uh, fight was just a blip on the radar. He wants to put it behind him and... Uh
Good luck on the show. You're a scary dude, but you're nice in person, and, and we'll be pulling for you. Thank you. Thank you.